Hello and welcome to this week's Wireless Land News Desk. My name's Tom Carpenter. I'm the CTO at CWNP. And this week, we've got several interesting news topics to talk about. Now, first of all, we're going to be looking at the reality that 2.4 gigahertz only devices just keep coming. There doesn't seem to be any end to this chain of devices that operate only in the 2.4 gigahertz frequency band. For example, in the last couple of weeks, there were announcements from Panasonic Industry Europe that they have developed a new 2.4 gigahertz only embedded Wi-Fi module. It's called the PAN 9420 module, and it is an 802.11 BGN device. So what this means is effectively this device is capable of operating as an 802.11 BG or N radio, and that means 2.4 gigahertz only. Now, the issue there is that this is an embedded module device. What it means is it provides everything you need for Wi-Fi on a board. So you don't necessarily have to write your own drivers that talk to the chipset or anything like that. All you have to do is connect this embedded module to whatever your device is, say a storage device or a toaster or a refrigerator, and then you can talk to the network through this embedded Wi-Fi module. So this is a component that could potentially be used in dozens or even hundreds of different devices that could then be sold as having Wi-Fi. And this is one of the reasons why you see so many different devices that come out that say they're Wi-Fi enabled and they're 2.4 gigahertz only because some of the least expensive embedded modules that are available are those 2.4 gigahertz only modules. So this is really an interesting concept. We may see more of the use of this particular device in consumer devices, but we may also see it in enterprise devices. So the point of this is that as IoT continues to grow and people want to continue to talk about IoT, we continue to see more and more motivation for organizations to develop 2.4 gigahertz IoT devices because the chipsets are cheap and embedded modules like this are often 2.4 gigahertz only. Now, of course, only time will tell how this really pans out in the end, but this is just one more example of why 2.4 gigahertz seems to be here to stay for quite a bit longer. Now, the benefit then that's coming, hopefully, is 802.11ax, but realize that the next news topic we're gonna to talk about reveals that 802.11ax is something in the distant future. Now, I know you might be thinking, hey, wait, we've heard about devices being released that are based on the draft specification. We look at enterprise vendors to come out with devices next year. Uh, these kinds of things make us think it's coming sooner rather than later. But there's a reality that we need to consider. And that reality is that even though devices are available, it does not mean they are in use at some threshold level that we want them to be. For example, to benefit from 802.11ax, you need not only an AXAP, but also an AX client. Now, don't get me wrong, you'll have better chipsets for talking to 802.11n clients in 2.4 gigahertz and things like that, but I'm talking about the AX specific capabilities. You know, what I like to call sub channelization, breaking the 20 megahertz channel into smaller channels to be able to talk to different devices at the same time within that channel, getting us better frequency reuse, because what are we doing? You can almost think about it like getting up to the moment four megahertz channels, for example. So rather than having one 20 megahertz channel, at that moment, we've got four or five sub channels, right? So the point is that we're able to get better frequency use because we can talk to these devices at the same time. Now, the benefit too is that if you think about it, a lot of IoT devices don't have a massive data demand. So they can get by with a narrower sub-channel, which is going to give them a lower data rate effectively. So the benefit then of AX could come, but let's talk about our next article in the news in order to see why that's not going to solve any problems anytime soon. One article recently stated that market research shows that there will be robust growth by 2021. <laughs> and another study shows that there will be sturdy growth by 2016, where in the 802.11 AC wave two space. And actually, let me correct that. It says there'll be sturdy growth by 2026. So we've got 
robust growth by 2021 in one market research article and sturdy growth by 2026 in another research article. I don't know about you, but this makes me stop and think, what's the difference between robust and sturdy? I'm not really sure. Robust maybe means it's going to boom quickly, suddenly, and then sturdy, it's going to stabilize in growth later on. I'm not really sure, but there are two different sets of research from two different research companies. And one of them is saying robust growth by 2021. Well, that's a couple years away. And then the other says sturdy growth by 2026. My goodness, just last year, we could say that was almost a decade away. Now we have to say it's about eight years away. The point is that if we're looking at robust growth in two or three years and sturdy growth in seven or eight years for 802.11 AC wave two, what does that tell us about the adoption rate that people are expecting for 802.11 AC wave two? It tells us a lot. Now in the consumer space, sure, it's adopted fairly quickly in comparison to the enterprise space. But here's the thing, and we just had a webinar yesterday with May Lassar, and she was talking about metrics and measurements. And one of the questions that came up during the webinar in the question and answer period was whether or not we were going to see uh, a, a lot of growth with 802.11ax coming out. And you know we had to be realistic and say that there are a lot of networks that actually are just fine on 802.11n. Did I say that? Yeah, there are a lot of networks that are just fine on 802.11n and they haven't been motivated to go to 802.11ac. Now, obviously those are usually smaller networks that don't have the demands and so forth, the capacity of clients and et cetera, but they are a very real part of the picture. They're a big percentage of the market. Think small businesses. Small businesses are a big percentage of the market. They're one of the largest employers in the United States and around the world. So they make up a large segment of the market. Therefore, we have to think about that reality. And then there's just the issue of many organizations say, why jump to 802.11ax when none of my clients support it yet? So there's a client saturation point where the vendors generally decide, okay, now it's time to upgrade our access points. And they've got to get to that client saturation point first to really get the benefit of this. So that's a factor that must be considered when you think about this. But in addition to this disparity in those two research articles, I want to deal with the reports on those research documents. The reports on those research documents, almost universally that I found online, were saying things like, the 802.11ac wave two standard. Now, I don't mean to use hysterionics here, but when we think about this, the reality is that there's no such thing as an 802.11ac wave two standard. It doesn't exist. There's an 802.11ac amendment to the standard, all right? It's part of 802.11.2016, the roll-up. So we could even say the most recent version of the 802.11 standard, but we can't say the 802.11 AC wave two standard. That doesn't exist. The difference between 802.11 AC wave one and AC wave two was required features and optional features. So if you look at the actual amendment or the current standard, you will see at the beginning of the very high throughput physical layer section or clause, that it lets you know the required features and the optional features. And guess what? Multi-user MIMO was an optional feature, therefore part of what they call wave two in the industry. So the industry likes to use this term wave one, wave two, so that they can differentiate the early APs versus the later APs, the early clients versus the later clients. But really what we're talking about is the difference between required and optional features in the standard. So let's just set the story straight and say that there is no 802.11 AC wave two standard. And let's put the blame where it goes. The blame goes on industry marketing that likes to use these phrases and terms in order to give themselves a point of differentiation in order to plan for the future and say where things are going to go. But for those of us that deal with the tech, we need to know there is no such thing as a wave two standard. Everything was defined in the ratified amendment for 802.11ac when it was ratified. It's just a difference of required versus optional features. Okay, I'll get off my rant there. Now, the final piece of news for the day is 
a little bit of humor from the Computer Electronics Show, which has been around for decades and decades now. And of course, it happened here at the beginning of the year in 2018. And there were a few interesting products announced this year. I've talked about some things coming out of that show in previous news desks, but I want to address some of the things that were really kind of interesting. The first one might be a bit useful, and then the others, at least I find a little bit humorous. So the first one is the Wi-Fi enabled light switches. Now, this is for those of us that are just too lazy to get up and go and flip a switch. Okay, maybe not. We've had clappers around forever. Remember those 1970s commercials where you could just clap to turn your lamp on and off? Who has lamps anymore? Does anyone have lamps? Anyway, we had those in the past and, and today now it's, hey Siri, turn the living room light on. Or, hey Siri, turn the living room light off and Siri just decided to come on for me. Thanks Siri, I appreciate that very much. So the point is that we've got this ability now with our lights to actually turn them on and off vocally because they're Wi-Fi enabled and they can receive commands from us. Okay, that, that might be useful in some scenarios. I can certainly see it beneficial to certain individuals who lack the ability to literally move around easily. But uh, for those of us that can get up and flip the switch, I really encourage you, stay healthy, get up and turn the light off or turn the light on. Now, the second thing, Wi-Fi enabled baby bottles. I found this to be quite interesting. So it's a baby bottle that measures the consumption of your baby. Now, over time, I can see that, but my mind immediately went to the humor of thinking about wanting to get alerted when the bottle was one quarter done so I could pull it away from the baby rather than actually just watching my child and making sure that they're consuming the right amount of milk. Now, maybe if we have a nanny or something like that that's watching the baby and we want to make sure they're feeding them appropriately, I get it. But boy, this sure is getting into interesting areas, isn't it? Let's go deeper. I can see some uses of the second one, a lot of uses for the first one, the light switch. Now, what about the third one? A Wi-Fi enabled robot litter box. Why am I even mentioning these things? Well, I'm mentioning them because we've said forever, look out, it's coming where nearly everything's going to be on the network. I think we can safely say that at least the potential for everything to be on the network is there in 2018. This year, we're going to see a Wi-Fi enabled robot litter box. That's right, this year. I mean, that's, you know, we joked about toasters. We joked about refrigerators four or five years ago. Today, reality has come. And every time your tabby goes to the bathroom, you can be notified. This is an exciting future we live in, folks. <laughs> now, the reality is I just want us to think about what this does say. It says that literally people are coming up with reasons and methods to put just about everything on the network. And therefore, your Wi-Fi career, because all these things, the light switch, the baby bottle, the litter box, they're all Wi-Fi. They don't have an Ethernet cable plugged in. That would be interesting for the baby bottle, wouldn't it? But they're Wi-Fi. Therefore, what we can say is the future is going to be filled with Wi-Fi, with cellular, 5G's uh, well on its way. We're going to be seeing the future filled with wireless. And so having the ability to do well with wireless networks is going to be very important. And there's a future where expertise in wireless is going to be involved in the consumer market in a big way. Home construction, for example, apartment complex construction. They're going to want a Wi-Fi expert to come in to make sure the Wi-Fi network in each apartment or the Wi-Fi network in that home can handle the 70 or 100 or 150 different devices in that home. They're going to be talking to the Wi-Fi network. That means they're going to need you they're going to need the knowledge you get from CWNP. So realize the value that's in the future for you when you have Wi-Fi knowledge. Well, that's what we have for the Wireless Land News Desk today. Again, I'm Tom Carpenter, and I'd like to thank you for watching. This will be archived on YouTube as well. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you can be notified about future livecasts.